Hey guys, what's up? This is the second video on pressure vessels. If you haven't watched the first one, I would recommend you to watch that one first. You can find the link down below and then continue watching this video. Also, you need to recall the concept of more circle and the fact that the maximum shear stress could be determined by measuring the radius of the more circle. In addition, we will be using the concept of generalized Hooke's law in order to find the relationship between stresses and strains. If you are rusty on any of these topics, I will put links here so we can brush up on those topics. All right, let's extend our stress analysis concept and determine how much would be the maximum shear stress on the pressure vessels. Remember that by doing the free body diagram and calculating the stresses, we did not observe any shear stress. However, we remember that sometimes there will be stresses developed out of the plane or by rotating the stress element. So here we want to study how much would be the maximum shear stress that is developed on the pressure vessels. Again, we are going to discuss cylindrical and spherical pressure vessels separately. First, I'm going to start with the spherical pressure vessels. On the spherical pressure vessels, at every direction, the magnitude of normal stress is PD divided by 4D. This is going to be the principal plane for this element, and normal stresses are going to be the same. So the more circle associated with this stress element is just one dot with a zero radius. So there is no shear stress developed on this plane. However, this is a three-dimensional stress element. If we look at this three-dimensional stress element from the other surfaces, we can identify two other more circles. One of them is shown here. Stress in the horizontal direction is sigma a and in the vertical direction is a zero. So these two principal stresses are forming one more circle that is shown here. Now we can see this more circle has non-zero radius, which is going to give us the maximum shear stress on that plane. And that would be equal to the radius of the circle, which is half of the diameter or sigma a divided by two. Shear stress that happens on spherical pressure vessel would be Pd divided by 8t. And remember, the maximum in plane was zero. Okay, now we're going to do the same for cylindrical pressure vessels. On a cylindrical pressure vessels, stresses in the horizontal and vertical direction are different from each other. Now I'm going to draw the stress element associated with this two-dimensional stress element. It is obvious that there will be in-plane shear stress. The magnitude of the in-plane shear stress would be the difference between the hoop stress and the longitudinal stress divided by 2. So the difference between these two is going to be PD divided by 4T divided by 2. That would give us PD divided by 8T. That is the maximum in-plane shear stress. On the other side, in a similar way, we can identify the maximum absolute shear stress by considering zero and looking at the other two possible surfaces. The radius of this larger circle in this is going to give us the maximum absolute shear stress. Okay, the maximum absolute shear stress is going to be the largest normal stress, which is the hoop stress, divided by two. These are for the stress elements that are located on the outer surface of this pressure vessel. If we consider the inner surface, there will be another normal stress that would be developed because of the internal pressure. That normal stress would exert the internal stress of negative P because that stress is going to be compressive. That internal gas is going to push the inner wall. So in that case, instead of considering zero, that more circle is going to shift to negative P. We see a larger shear stress on that case. Radius of this larger circle would be equal to PD divided by 40 plus half of the internal pressure. So same is true for spherical pressure vessels. In other words, if you want to determine the maximum absolute shear stress on an element located on the inner surface of pressure vessel, we just add half of P to this maximum stress. There is one more topic that I want to talk about, and that is how to calculate the strains on the pressure vessels. And in order to calculate strains, we need to recall the relationship between normal stresses and normal strains in the generalized Hooke's law. So let's start with talking about the spherical pressure vessels. In the spherical pressure vessel, we see that the normal stress is the same in every direction, and there is no shear stress. This is going to be a plane stress situation because there is no stress perpendicular to the stress element. So for plane stress elements, 
The generalized Hooke's law is like this. Epsilon x is 1 over e sigma x minus nu multiplied by sigma y. Now I'm going to replace sigma x and sigma y. Sigma x is pd divided by 40. Same is true for sigma y. That means that we can simplify the strain equation like this. So the magnitude of strain in the horizontal direction in the, in the spherical pressure vessels is pd divided by 4te multiplied by 1 minus nu. And because spherical pressure vessels are symmetric in every direction, this epsilon x is valid for every direction, including y or any other rotated axis. We can develop the same strain equations for cylindrical pressure vessels, assuming that stress in the horizontal direction is longitudinal, and in the vertical direction it's hook. Sigma x is going to be pd divided by 4t, and sigma y is going to be pd divided by 2t, and there is no shear stress on that element. Now we can use the same plain stress element and replace sigma x and sigma y into this equation. This is going to give us the magnitude of strain in the longitudinal direction. Now let's calculate that for strain in the vertical direction, in the hook direction. So sigma y is pd divided by 2t and sigma x is pd divided by 4t. And the equation would simplify to pd divided by 4te multiplied by 2 minus nu. This is going to give us strain in the hook direction. If someone wants to determine how much are the deformation in any direction, they need to simply multiply its strain by the magnitude of the length in those directions. Now let me summarize the equations that we have learned for spherical pressure vessels. First, normal stress is PD divided by 4T. There is no shear stress on that element on the outer surface, but there will be out of plane maximum shear stress. For the element located on the outer surface, which is shown here, the maximum absolute shear stress is half of the normal stress, PD divided by 8T. And for the inner surface, because of the internal pressure that is acting on that element, there will be one additional term. And the magnitude of strain is calculated from this equation. Now, let me again simplify the equations that we have developed for cylindrical pressure vessels. There are two types of normal stresses on the cylindrical pressure vessels. The one that is along the longer direction of the element is called the longitudinal stress, and the magnitude of that is PD divided by 4T, which is the same as the one that we developed for spheres. The hoop stress is going to be twice larger, so that would be PD divided by 2T. There is no shear stress, but after rotating, we can determine that there will be out of plane maximum shear stresses. The maximum absolute shear stress on the outer surface of the pressure vessel would be PD divided by 4T, and the maximum absolute shear stress for the inner surface would have additional term of half of the internal pressure. And strains in the longitudinal direction and the vertical direction are also shown in this figure. So we have developed all equations that we need for determining stresses and strains in cylindrical and spherical pressure vessels. In the next lecture, we are going to use these equations more in depth and solve more problems.